<laughs> How do you get a disparate group of freckle-faced dunderheads spread out in an area the size of inner Tokyo to come together in a single population center? Well, firstly, you don't. That's the easy solution. Anyone with freckles has no soul and thus requires no transportation as their mortal flesh has no spiritual purpose. The boring answer is that you build trains. Trains. The best invention of the early industrial period behind boiling water. Trains. We put the local in locomotion. These loony locomotives are among the most important types of infrastructure a city can have. If the roads are the lifeblood of a nation and its transportation of the citizens of our sexy state, then trains are the much less appreciated lymphatic lymph of the population centres lucky enough to have it. Carefully transporting the teeming refuse of any wretched member of our stratified society, which of course includes me. <laughs> My request is simple. Don't hate on train nerds, people. You may not find trains as fun to talk about, but public transportation is no joke. Just ask the 1930s Fremantle politician Alex McCallum what he thinks of infrastructure like that. Oh wait, you can't. He died of lymphatic failure 90 years ago. I was mitochondrial DNA in my great grandparents when it happened. They called me. Alex is gone. I couldn't say anything because in spite of being the powerhouse of the cell, I was not capable of verbalizing. Mitochondria, the earliest signs of non-verbal autism. One thing I don't understand about Perth trains is smart riders. I got mine for the first time recently and they're basically a rewards card for trains. You scan the card, it charges you automatically and you probably save a tiny amount of money doing that instead of getting a ticket, I don't know. Why? Why does this have to exist? It feels more affordable to the system if we just made the trains free instead of giving these guards what is some dystopian space age card scanner clearly produced through expensive experimental methods to check if you tapped with your $35 ticket. I would much prefer my train riding experience to feel less like a Woolworths rewards card program every time I wanted to move between suburbs. I know it's probably not a popular opinion, mainly people who are living payslip to payslip would rely on it to save money, but you guys can't just take one for the team and be poor so we can get rid of it. It's so much nicer for me. The stories I have on Perth trains are really something. I was waiting at the station in Kelmscott when this legend of a bloke holding a bag full of 10 cent bottles sits next to me with his partner. He was an avid environmentalist judging by the size of the bottle bag he was carrying, holstered on the back of his shoulder like a Mount Franklin Santa Claus. While sitting there he wisely remarked, The bloody radiation coming from those train wires. I'll make you sick and kill ya. He then, in a very heroic fashion, walked onto the train and continued his journey. What a legend. Knowingly risking his life for the meager reward of probably collecting more plastic bottles for 10 cents a pop. How much more comfortable would life be if you replaced Qantas and Virgin planes with flying Transperth trains? Not only would you solve the trolley problem, but there'd be so much more room and capacity with your legs. That and Transperth guards griffin hair wands would feel less out of place as being an airport security guard feels like it should have a civil protection wand more than a guy in what looks like a police uniform converted to a casual marketable t-shirt. I mean trains do have the drawback of not having toilets which would suck in those direct flights to Europe. Also the lack of appropriate air pressure would lead to everyone asphyxiating but those are comparatively minor problems to the vastly superior leg room solution. I saw this bloke in a white outfit reminiscent of a golf course worker riding into the train on not to comment on weight, an extremely chunky electric scooter on which he mounted a behemoth Bluetooth speaker. One so big it puts those stimulus package surround sound systems from 08 to shame. This golfer dude stylishly reversed into the disabled spot of the train and after one stop chucked on biblical rap music at maximum volume. I swear shaking the entire train to its very core with its holy doofs like it was a two-pack reincarnation of Jesus Christ himself before finally leaving, sunglasses and hat forever making him a mystery to us lowly pagan travellers. 
I swear the world was forever quieter when he left, like a little bit of ourselves was taken with him, extracted from our being like a super effective Giga Train attack. Look at how Transperf trains bounce around makes me think of the Ramon from Cars just voluntarily lifting himself up and down as if emulating a graph of economic growth since the 1890s. Maybe Ramon was trying to warn us, reminded to retain our assets and prepare for the inevitable economic fall that is coming in the next couple of years. That families will struggle and people will not be able to live in their rented homes forever. For the market system is a brutal beast that sheds with the cruelest distinction. The trains also look like one of those little baby walking assistants, you know, with the little holes they put their tiny little legs in. I do really like looking out at the window of Perth trains because it's like looking into a slight slightly different universe of Perth after passing every tunnel. Trains, the most least not uninteresting way to travel between universes. Rick and Morty if it was a British soap opera with slightly faster pacing and just as much harassment. Bah. Speaking of... Eshays, When I was near Bedford, I got approached by a bunch of actual real-life native Eshays. It's rare you see native animals in the wild. I think I've only seen one dingo my entire life when I was living in Newman. Most kangaroos I've witnessed were promptly roadkill on the highway. Only Eshays I've witnessed at this point were the specialised zoo known as the Youth Centre, and those were more or less domesticated by roadblocks at that point. They're fascinating creatures. The first thing you notice is the walk. They walk like Dagoth Earth. Sheba! Hey, cuz you up in my postcode 2758? Yeah, you are in Red Mountain, that's my turf. Come here, Nerevar, cunt or cunt come. Then they asked me the following. Hey, hey, you look like you're on crack. You're in a time loop, cuz. You're in a time loop. You've been here ten times. Hey, what do you think of Andrew Tate? You think he's cool, eh? You're in a time loop. I didn't know how to respond because the only thing I knew about Andrew Tate was his meme comparing him to Singapore's longest serving leader, Lee Kuan Yew. And I was disappointed to learn that Eshades were either not well informed or not big fans of Singapore's longest serving leader, Lee Kuan Yew. Ah, yeah, cuz post war independence in Malaysia was pretty mad. Eh? The way, the way with their Merdeka and stuff. How Singapore's full on just abrupt independence. Hey? Reminds me of my mum kicked me out of the house for no reason after I smoked a dairy in my bedroom. Oh well, you can't make friends with every animal on earth. Just have to stick to slowly blinking in front of stray cats or going to a local furry convention sometime if I want to make any more feral friends. Perth trains often serve as a meeting point of distant families. Where the end of the Cold War tore down the Berlin Wall, the trains of Australia tore down the tyrannical wall of distance. As a result, we see unbelievably British families that always seem to use these trains to do their version of highly emotional embracing, which is saying, hello, how have you been? In a voice that belongs to the dad from Peppa Pig. Always kitted out with a backpack and floral clothes like a hiker in Hawaii, treating the former swamp planet Perth is the closest thing they'll ever experience to a tropical island because god forbid they ever go on a trek somewhere actually tropical without dying of heat stroke. And that's just one type of person I've seen on the train. Fremantle trains have a completely different demographic to Kelmscott trains. Every remotely feminine individual has a floral dress that looks like it was sewn up by a member of their family set on preparing them for a Mary Poppins picnic. Those British golfer hats are a common sight as well. If not Head with the dress and piercings, I would have thought I was transported to the Lost Coast map in Half-Life. On one corner of the train, two oldies eyed someone's bike and discussed its design, could a remark about how they've been making bikes since the 80s. Very different to, say, the Armadale line, which has Eshays eyeing bikes looking to steal them. The people on the train are like they come from those dainty towns in Christmas films. I swear I even saw John McClane there at one point, but given he would have the musculature to qualify for the Fremantle Dockers, there's no doubt the male Freo is hunting him down to join that footy team as we speak. I now have a wooden spoon. Heave ho, heave ho, heave ho. 
Ultimately, the trains of Perth are an iconic part of the city experience. They are instantly recognisable, their green outline and very comfortable seat patterns. I've yet to travel overseas in my life, but if I did, I think it would be a discomfort for me to see a sitting void of trains like these. An icon of comfort, knowing I can go anywhere I please.